Hi, I'm Sean Romo and this is Mariana Hartley and we're archaeologists here with Jamestown Rediscovery. Over the past month or so, we've been running an archaeological field school and a kids camp for children who are interested in archaeology. So we've been doing a lot of training and teaching of future archaeologists here at Jamestown Island. For this episode of Dig Deeper, we thought it would be fun to explore the process of how we dig, show you how we lay out a unit, um, what goes into deciding where we dig on the site. So welcome to the first in our new series of Archaeology 101. Before we can actually get into how we do archaeology, we need to answer the question, what is archaeology? So archaeology is the study of the human past through the physical traces that people leave behind in the ground and on the landscape. So it's looking at things like this brick or other artifacts to figure out what someone was doing in a particular location um, or what trades they may have been practicing. It's looking at walls and foundations and post holes to figure out where buildings were. And it's looking at broader landscapes, how everything ties together to try to figure out how a city grew and how people lived in that space. Now, here at Jamestown, we practice historical archaeology, uh, which just means that we have access to historic documents, things that can give insight into the motivations behind why somebody did something. Now, we have to actually be a little bit careful when we're reading the historic documents because just like anything that people write down, it could be biased or incomplete. Uh, not everybody wrote down everything that was happening, and they didn't always write it down accurately. But the physical things, the objects that people left behind, they don't lie. They tell the stories of everybody who was at a site. We can see what people ate, um, where they lived, where they worked, what they did for their jobs, all sorts of things based on these physical traces. So archaeology studies all this stuff to try to figure out what happened in the past. Now, we don't limit ourselves just to objects and landscapes. We actually draw from a lot of different disciplines. So we'll draw from biology to study the faunal remains that we find. We'll draw from forensics if we have to look at human remains. We draw from geology to understand the stratigraphy that we dig through every day. So archaeology is really a syncretic discipline. We bring in information from any other discipline, any other field that's going to help us understand the past. So most often, the way archaeologists get at information about the past is through excavation, like Caitlin's doing here behind me. Uh, we dig down through whatever layers are under our feet, looking at the artifacts that are within them and, and the formation of those layers, the locations, the size and shape, and that's going to tell us a little bit about what's going on in a particular space. Um, most of the time, we're using shovels or trowels to make sure we take off each layer separately and get the maximum information out of there. But occasionally we get to play with bigger tools like the backhoe if we know something is totally modern, um, like road fill. Um, but nine times out of ten, if you see us digging on site, we're using a shovel, we're using a trowel, and we're slowly uncovering the history beneath our feet. So a lot of people ask us how we choose a spot to dig. Sometimes it's through ground penetrating radar surveys that we've done uh, recently on the site with our own equipment or sometimes it's previous archaeology. Now Jamestown Island's uh, grid that we work within was established by the National Park Service in the 1930s and it's based on one of the corners of the steps for the obelisk uh, which was constructed for the 300th anniversary of Jamestown. Now, and that grid was set up by the National Park Service archaeologists and we work within that grid system which is, allows us to look back at archaeology that was done previously even by the National Park Service and go back to those areas and know exactly Exactly what kind of features they found and where they were digging. Now I'm standing in the bottom of one of our 10 by 10 foot units and if you visit us at Historic Jamestown, our Jamestown Rediscovery archaeologists will most of the time be digging a 10 by 10 foot unit that looks exactly like this one. And a lot of times we get questions as to whether these are foundations. These are actually um, our skilled archaeologists going down through the layers and very carefully shaving back these walls so that we can see the different overburdened layers that we're going through uh, and then getting down to undisturbed soil. Now, 
To start with, how we lay out one of these 10 by 10 foot units is by uh, using our survey equipment to stake out uh, points on that 1930s grid um, that we have that's established. And then sometimes we'll um, triangulate from two of the corners to establish where the other points are. Sometimes we use the survey equipment to, to stake in all of them. Then we place nails in each of the spots where those known uh, coordinates are, and we'll string out the unit um, all the way around, usually with the string on the inside, so that we're getting just the material that is within that 10 by 10 foot square. Whenever we open a new excavation area, we always have a reason to be there. As Mariana was saying, it might be because we saw something interesting on a GPR survey, or maybe because we found something nearby that we want to trace out on the landscape. In this particular unit, we have maps from the National Park Service that show they found archaeological features in this space. This was already dug back in the 1940s. And we wanted to come to the same area and re-expose those features to see if we had the same interpretations and if we could learn anything more from them. Now, when we dig, we dig in what's called natural layers. So wherever we're working, we're gonna take out each distinct soil layer separately. And you can actually see back behind me a really great example of stratigraphy of different natural layers. Each one of these represents a separate individual deposit of soil. So in our excavations, we would take out this layer by itself, and then this one, and then this red layer, and the sand underneath, and then that gravel. Now, in this particular case, this stuff in the wall is actually fill for a roadbed but in other areas, each layer might be from a different time period or hold different types of artifacts. And so we want to get at that information as best we can by taking them out separately. So the arrangement of layers within a test unit is going to tell us a little bit about the chronology of a site. Uh, so if you've taken any geology classes, you've probably heard of the law of superposition, which says that the newest soil layer or deposit is going to be on top of the older ones. So basically, things get stacked up over time. Now, that's actually really evident in this wall, and that law, that pattern, is how we figure out relative chronology. So if you look in here, we've got our modern topsoil, and then we've got this gravel deposit and this bedding that's associated with the road. That actually sits on top of this distinct deposit, and you can see where it's been cut through. So we know, not only is this on top, but it actually cut this layer. Therefore, this roadbed has to be newer than this gray sand. Now, what this sand actually represents is the archaeological backfill from 1941, when this space was originally dug. They dug the square down, they put their soil back, and then in the 50s, they built this road. So chronologically, even if we didn't know the dates, we'd know this was earlier than this. Now, one of the things we look for as archaeologists are breaks in the patterns of layers. Right? Something that's cutting through because things that are cutting into another deposit are also more recent. Great example is right here. This is a relatively modern post hole that cut down through our gravel roadbed and our archaeological backfill and even into the underlying clay. So we know that this post hole is newer than our roadbed and our backfill. Again, even if we didn't have artifacts or historic documents that told us when these were formed, we'd still be able to know something about how this space changed over time. Looking at these layers, that's the basis for how we begin to put together a chronology for the site as a whole. So Sean talked about the different layers that we go through within our test units, and digging this test unit is a way for us to exercise the vertical and horizontal control. So we're um, getting control of each of the layers. Uh, we're looking for the changes in the color, uh, texture of the soils as we go down as to when they were placed, and then what kind of activity caused that layer to be formed on the site. We're also looking for artifacts in there that will help us to date each of those layers. And we can tell exactly where artifacts came from within this test unit. So if we have some artifacts that we found here that are similar to ones we find uh, in the surrounding area, it might tell us where a building is, it might tell us where um, something's been disturbed from a later time period. All of that information shows up and we have it exactly where it was found. Maintaining that horizontal and vertical control, knowing where things are from, is really important in an archaeological site because 
even though we might just be digging here this year, we might come back in the next few years, open up a wider area and chaining together the data from one spot with other excavations is probably going to reveal some larger patterns that we just may not see otherwise. So context, like Sean said, is so important on the site. And we've had times where um, there was a Bartman handle for a Bartman jug that was found in the early years of the project. And then 10 years later, digging in another part of the site, down in the bottom of a well, we found the rest of the jug that that went to. And that wouldn't have happened had we not been able to tell exactly where that material came from. It just gave us so much more information about what's going on in the fort and when pieces of that Bartman were being discarded. Cross men's like uh, the Bartman jug fragments Mariana was talking about are really exciting for us. And if you find a, you know, an artifact in here that links to something across the site, that may actually be the key for understanding one or both of those areas. If we know uh, an artifact is from a sealed feature filled in in 1610 and we find the other half somewhere else, we've got a temporal link between two spaces at the site. So again, looking at context, looking at where things are found, that is the basis on how we build out our interpretations of the landscape. So on the next episode of Archaeology 101, we'll go into more depth into the features and the layers that we dig through on the site. So stay tuned. Thanks for watching. Dig deeper.